Did you know that everywhere in Florida is in a flood zone? What do you need to know about buying in a flood zone? Actually, quite a bit. Yo, I'm Adrian, longtime Florida realtor, and I'm here to help you get your Florida life. Happy Wednesday, everyone. If you're new here, new real estate videos come out every Wednesday. I like to intersperse some local videos and other shorts during the week. If you're interested in that, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you want to book an appointment with me or just ask a question, there is a ton of information in the description how you can do that. I'd love to help in any way I can. Today we are going to talk about flood zones. In 1975, FEMA started mapping out flood zones in the United States. The entire state of Florida is a flood zone. Now, one thing you need to know before we start this video is all of this information is subject to change and has changed quite a bit over the years. So a lot of things I'm going to say are just sort of to get you started, get you thinking, get you asking questions. In Charlotte County, we see four basic flood zones. We see velocity, AE, X, and D. I personally have not to my memory, sold anything in the Velocity Zone. It is very small. When I spoke to Erin Galley from Nolan Insurance a couple of weeks ago, she assured me that there is some Velocity Zone here, and she's probably right. She's been selling insurance around here forever, so I'm not disputing that. I just haven't run into it. Most of my personal sales have been in AE and X, with a few in D. If I were to split these flood zones into two categories, V and AE would be in one area and X and D would be in another. The reason I split them this way is because if you get a mortgage, if you use any kind of lender, they are typically going to make you get flood insurance if you're in AE or V. If you're in X or D, not so much, so you can do what you want. If you are a cash buyer, you can do whatever you want either way. Now, citizens insurance, which is our state insurance, is making cash buyers get flood insurance if they're in A, E, and B. And my understanding is in the future, that will be true for X and D as well. But that is a big change that is very recent. Will it stay? <laughs> I don't know. Also, not everybody has to get citizens insurance. It's really a complicated thing on how you decide your insurance. You can watch that video or call Erin and she can help you, but that, that'll get you started. So V and AE, I like to say that they are considered higher hazard flood zones. And then X and D are lower hazards. Although Erin used the words preferred and non-preferred. And I personally might start changing my wording to that because a lot of people come to me and they say, we want to be in the low hazard flood zones because we're afraid of floods. And I will tell you in my lifetime, in my experience, I have seen flooding almost more, I feel like, maybe it just stands out more in X or D than AE. Or at least it's a, it feels like a very even match. In my opinion, and I think the opinion of a lot of people, though, you know, you can ask the federal government, they are mostly worried about the big storm surges with the V and AE. That's why they are ranked higher. We saw that in Fort Myers Beach. During Hurricane Ian, I will tell you, I stayed in Bernster Isles, which is AE. The water never got above the dock. However, there was some flooding in X up in Northport. These zones don't guarantee you, you won't be flooded. Occasionally, I run across buyers who want no risk at all as far as resale, hurricanes, flooding, any kind of weather, any kind of anything. And unfortunately, living in Florida is a great life, but there's always risk anywhere you live. I also run into a lot of people who have homes in other places that tell me about tornadoes that hit and blizzards. And I don't want to minimize any of it. It's just not something I can control. The other thing I want you to know before we move on to the FEMA 50% rule, which is very important, is that just because you are off the water does not mean you are in X or D. I do get people who say, oh, I'd like to be in Panagora Isles, but I'll live on the golf course so I can be out of the flood zone. 
I know what they mean. Uh, technically, X and D, as we've already covered, are not out of the flood zone, but we understand what they mean. They want to not pay flood insurance or they don't want that risk. Many times you will be off the water and in AE. Okay, so the FEMA 50% rule gets very confusing. I'll give you an idea of how it works. For instance, in the city of Punta Gorda, they take the assessed value of the building that you are buying. So it could be a $100,000 building. This is important to understand. It's not the entire lot and building. And I'll give you an example in a minute. But let, they take your building and they take 50% of it. So if the building is worth $100,000, you get $50,000 of permitted work per year. First, you need to know it only applies to homes in AE or V that are built base flood elevation plus one foot under elevation. I'm going to explain. When FEMA made these flood maps, they made base flood elevation for every area. So often when you see AE, you see it preceded by numbers. So you'll see 9 AE or 10 AE. One thing I really want you to know is when you see that in the tax appraiser's website, if you go to an address and it says 9 AE, that does not mean the house is built up to 9 AE. It means it's supposed to be built up to 9 AE. To make it even more confusing, one change they made is now they want it one foot above that. So it says 9 AE and now they want it at 10 AE. If you're an X and D, you don't have to worry about this currently. Let's say you have a house that says 9 AE in the tax appraiser's website. How do you find out what the house is built up to? You get something called an elevation certificate. Here's where buyers get frustrated. They expect every seller to have, have an elevation certificate. Every seller does not. Some people didn't care. Some people just never got one. To top it off, a lot of the way they did elevation certificates changed about a year ago because they decided when they originally mapped the sea level, it wasn't correct. So they all the elevation certificates that were made were wrong and now there's a formula to make them right but you could get one that's not even correct now an elevation certificate costs about 250 dollars if you're really concerned about that and the seller doesn't have one i recommend my customers get it during their due diligence period so you have the elevation certificate you're not built up over one foot and you want a lot of work done on a house then you get into the fema 50 percent rule where it gets even more fun is every jurisdiction under the FEMA 50% rule has different rules to apply the FEMA 50% rule. For instance, in Charlotte County, we have the Charlotte County government, and then we have the city of Punta Gorda. The city of Punta Gorda does it a little bit different than the Charlotte County government does it. Charlotte County is a little bit more lenient. City of Punta Gorda is a little bit more strict. However, I will say that this has gotten more lenient over time. Now, in Charlotte County, they have, an, they have an adjusted market value list that they look at. If you disagree with their assessment or their adjusted market value, you can get an appraisal. It has to be a licensed appraiser. And before I hired any appraiser, I would call the building department and make sure that you are hiring someone that the end result they will take. So you want to follow all of their rules. I do think there is quite a bit of paperwork involved, but I will tell you that if you've never dealt with our city or county government, I get compliments all the time, even though I don't work with them. I tell customers, call them, they'll tell you. The feedback I get is how fantastic they are all to deal with. So don't be afraid of that. In certain areas on the water where you have these 1960s homes that need a lot of work, the lot is worth way more than the house. So in your head, you're thinking, well, I just paid $800,000 for this house, but most of that is the lot. So you have to look at the assessed value of the building, which might be, I mean, I've seen them at $80,000. I've seen them low, so that's barely a roof. It can be a problem. Now, Charlotte County is a little bit more lenient. They actually have an exception for roofs, by the way, the city of Punta Gorda made an exception for roofs right after Hurricane Ian, but I don't believe that's in play anymore. The city of Punta Gorda used to look at five years. Charlotte County used to look at one year. Now Charlotte County does not look at one year. 
They don't have a look back as they call it right now. What they are looking for is that you're not doing one project. Let's say you have a house that needs 20 windows and that's gonna go over. They wanna see that you're not just phasing in the windows. The city of Punta Gorda told me 40% triggers paperwork basically. So if you're getting a new AC, which these days I see about $10,000 for a new AC, it's likely your building's worth more than $20,000. So I can't promise you, but it's unlikely that that's going to trigger paperwork. But when you need a new roof and you need a slew of things, it's something to know there is a 50% rule that you have to be aware of. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week.